My name is Connie Colhavy and I'm a Métis from the Northwest Territories. I was born and raised and I lived there until I was 17 and then moved to uh, Edmonton and then Quebec City and finally uh, came to reside in Nanaimo where I presently work in a school district and I help students. I'm an Aboriginal education assistant. A long time ago with the First Nations uh, women, a lot of their decorations for um, the men were used with quill and uh, shells and bones. So whatever they found that they could put on their uh, regalia, that's what they would use. So this would be uh, the porcupine hair and then changing to the quill and then they came up with their own natural dyes from the earth and the clay and whatever they could find that was uh, from uh, nature and then they changed that into jewelry. So this is probably something that you see uh, more up to date, more nowadays. When the um, European men came to Canada, they started to bring in some trade materials. Some of that was cotton and different materials. Along with that, they brought in beads and trade. So um, the first glass beads in that came from Czechoslovakia. And they brought those different colors in. So the Métis people, the women that we did the work, uh, became better known or called the flower beadwork people. When it's so much, we can okay? do this. Put a There's hole. There's still bananas left over. Put your finger. Another hole over here, and then when it looks, it looks like an infinity. See? Are you going to do it as a whole slab? Instead of biscuits? Yeah. You want to do it biscuits or a whole slab? Tansy, near Stella Johnson, Zikarsen. My name is Stella Johnson. I'm a Cree Métis. I work at VIU as a Métis elder in residence. I was also an Aboriginal support worker in Duncan School District. And I also do a lot about the Métis culture. I teach the Cree language. <laughs> T, K, T, M, M, S, Y, H. Tanda kia xnamaxen. Nia ochinis. Tanda kia xnamaxen. Niwi gik. Kigwai isa isi katem ki atem. Isi kaso daisy ayawawatim namoya nia ayawaw minos isi kaso cake tanse tanse kiwa nimioyan tashi ishnigashoyan jet kanoti kanasi one ihi
My name is Mike Benny. I'm uh, an elder and a director for Mid-Island Métis Nation in Nanaimo, British Columbia. I'm uh, born and raised in British Columbia. My family goes quite a ways back in British Columbia history. Back to the fur trade days, uh, the first ancestor that came in was Wakan Bushi. He came in in 1804 with Simon Fraser. He had quite an illustrious career with the Hudson's Bay Company as an interpreter, enforcer. He was used in many ways and uh, traveled on many brigades. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, my great-grandfather and some of the articles that uh, I have here. This was a smoking cap that he used to wear when he smoked his pipe. Very traditional Métis beating. This was one of the pipes that he had, and it's a Meerschaum pipe. It's, uh, I think it was actually made in Turkey, but it's got a gold band on it. It says ACM Christmas 1900. So it's been around a while. Common way of getting goods in and out of that area was uh, pack trains. Here's a picture of my great grandfather and a man named Catiline, who was quite a famous packer that had a pack train, he actually bought a pack train in that area from the Hudson's Bay Company. My grandmother remembered Catiline, and this is a, a, a letter that she had written about Catiline. Fort St. James. When I was a child at Fort St. James, a pack train man <coughs> by the name of Catiline, I think he was a Spaniard, used to come to the fort in the summer. He was a good man with horses, took care of them, and knew how to pack them so they didn't get back sores. Many people turned out to watch him. But what delighted my small mind the most was when my father, Mr. Burry, invited him into the house and took him into the office for a drink of Hudson's Bay rum. I always managed to squeeze myself in at the time because he always left so much in his glass, which he poured in his hands and then all over his head and rubbed it in thoroughly. I remember well he had a great shock of thick curly black hair and I always wondered if it was the rum which made it look so nice and thick and curly. Signed by my grandmother Annie A. Rodiker. The fur trade on the Pacific coast of the Rockies started early on probably from the late 1600s. The Americans, the British, the Spaniards and the Russians traded for the sea otter. None of these folks ever were interested in going inland or establishing forts. In 1804, a company from the east called the Northwest Company first breached the Rocky Mountains and came into the northern British Columbia. They established Fort McLeod. The next spring, they continued their quest into British Columbia and established a fort in Fort St. James. They named this area New Caledonia. And Simon Fraser called it New Caledonia because it reminded him of his homeland in Scotland. They had a difficult time uh, in this area because of the terrain. If you see, there are mountains, lots of mountains, and our major rivers run north and south, not east and west like they do on the prairie provinces. Here they had many more obstacles. Eventually, they'd have to find a better way to get goods out of the country and back into the country they used the transcontinental route and it went right across Canada back to Lake Superior. So they found out by the time they were over there and halfway back, lots of times the rivers were freezing up and, and they ended up having to spend the winter with half their supplies somewhere. So they were in search of a better route. They decided that they would try and explore this river. So in 1808, Simon Fraser came down to where Fort George or Prince George is now today went down the Fraser River, all the natives told him it's impossible. You can't navigate this river. He didn't listen to them. He got down the river as far as he could and he went in and out and in and out and portaged around and got right to the mouth, but it wasn't a feasible route. So they had to find another route. They established a fort at Fort Alexandria and they built a trail over to Fort Kamloops. Now there was a company before the Northwest Company in southern British Columbia, where Kamloops is now, they were an American fur trading company, and they had a fort in Fort George on the mouth of the Columbia River, and they already had a route they were using to Kamloops. So by 1811, the Northwest Company bought them out and acquired that route. 